be a failure. As long as it's not gonna kill you, it's gonna make you what? Stronger. Okay, I think while we are while we are on there, it would be very interesting to just find out from you whether each of you thinks that there is room or space or ability to collaborate. I uh, mean, I'm looking here at you know all of the stakeholders when it comes to people. So we have a group of people here in any African country, and we know that government uh, does have some responsibilities towards them, which is, which is what you're for. And you do believe that private business uh, does have some way that they can change those people's lives. Do you guys imagine a situation where they could collaborate? Do you imagine a situation where we have you know public sector organizations, corporations, NGOs, uh, you know, your startups as well, collaborating? Is that feasible? Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, uh, we do collaborate. But the problem is, again, with government, you, you cannot work against government. We need government. You can't, you can't do anything. And Rwanda is very well structured. So you can't go to a district without government approval, for example. So you, you have to work with government. My problem is with government is is what they value. They value foreign companies more than local companies, for example. You know, why are you gonna give the red carpet treatment to a company that's bringing you millions, not knowing that in the long run, those millions will go back to that country, you know, instead of valuing that local uh, 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 company. NGO, same thing. You, you, you find out that NGO, because we work with some NGOs, you find out that NGOs are more focused. So, true story, right? Uh, we, I won't say the name of the NGO, but uh, we work with an NGO and they told us that our solution was so good that they couldn't promote it because the funders might give us the money directly. So you find NGOs that are playing politics also. So those are the issue. If you're really focusing on solving the problem, then the problem can be solved. But you find yourself, those big organization, government also, focusing so much on politics more on the solving the problem. That's the issue. Right, uh, I think shots have been effectively fired there. Would you want to... Yeah. Ah, voilà. uh, ce qu'on ce qu qu dit notamment sur... Je vais d'abord répondre sur la deuxième partie, en fait, de ton intervention qui est... Enfin, la première partie, quand tu parlais de... de 
de, de prima qu'on doit faire sur les entreprises locales et non forcément étrangères, etc. On, uh, local companies. I mean, this is to me economy. It is quite simple today. We cannot live in an open world where we don't have any border, etc. Uh, where we are, we are governed by rules and uh, uh, regulations signed by our states on our behalf or not. This is another debate. And today we are, as I say, we have the World Organization that govern trade relationship between states and organization in which our countries are parties and say, all right, we are going to uh, close ourselves on ourselves. This is one. And secondly, it has to do with power and capacity of action. What we are saying today that we need to build uh, a highway, uh, a highway for lanes. And if you don't have the capacity to do it when it comes to local capacities and you do not actually have the power or knowledge or a capacity, you have to open up to foreign uh, uh, companies because I want if I want to be the road if it is uh, a, a bid and let me tell my uh, my country if uh, my country say I will have 200 francs CFA and then a German company is saying okay I would just take 100 it is a value added it is a matter of public uh, public uh, market no country is so serious today and we are not going to reject the idea of a dose or uh, a part of protectionism which is a phase that is necessary to be our, our state no serious economy can deny it so actually total opening to the others through ca foreign capitals uh, this cannot uh, develop any country it can transform the economy but to me this is something that uh, is to be taken into account so let me Came back to the first question. Actually, there is a, a platform. Why? And to me, this is necessary. And uh, it comes uh, from the origin. I mean, uh, uh, we, when we talk about local uh, companies, it could be NGOs, that organization, they have a specific role in the, what they have to do. What I reject uh, uh, two years ago when I was talking about entrepreneur, what I'm saying is that this is what I call the narrative of entrepreneurship. Let me be specific. I'm not talking about the entrepreneurs, but the those who narrate uh, entrepreneurship histories. I mean, uh, uh, today having a speech uh, uh, which does not promote. Uh, uh, we are going to do this. We are going to do that. Uh, uh, we not. We are not going to rely on anyone, knowing that in an economy we need human capital, and uh, human capital has to do with. Uh, performance or competence what we acquire in schools in trainings so since the state has the right, not even the right but the duty to generate a conducive environment to innovators to entrepreneurs to the economy at large and uh, the senegalese talk about it uh, the startup act uh, that senegal is going to uh, just put in place which is going to facilitate the uh, work the work of the startupers let me use the word startupers so from uh, company heads because i'm talking about uh, generally so the ngos also have a role to play in terms of barriers in terms of uh, um, citizenship work so the companies also at large have a role to play on the economy and they have to create jobs create wealth and do things such a way that today everybody can benefit from the wealth that is generated actually this platform is in existence it is original currently it is not moving on well because uh, things are difficult but this is to me where we can reach equilibrium next submission day um perhaps let me go back to you uh henry and then you know just boring from what he's saying i know that there's a school of thought that says look this whole startup economy uh, you know it's a bubble it's gonna burst uh, we probably might happen in the same way that it happened in europe you know when there was a, a dot-com bubble and at some point it burst are we overrating ourselves and perhaps just to add to that should we stop looking to you know silicon valley perhaps as a, as a measure of inspiration for successful startups you're a startup owner how do you guys rate yourself amongst yourselves is that your inspiration or you're coming from the bottom up so so which is which and where do you see ourselves going in terms of the models that may work right here in africa did you say a, a startup bubble yes oh, okay i wasn't yeah. sure if i heard you uh... <laughs> You heard I, me right I, first time. I, I, I don't. I don't believe in. I mean, a bubble usually is based on the industry, not necessarily. I mean, startups is nothing new. It's now. When I first started my business, entrepreneurship was was something you do when you fail in school. You know, so that, that I remember clearly, my mother telling me I should focus more in my books than trying to start a business. So entrepreneurship startups now they have glamorized this. Uh, 
this uh, startup, the media, the government. Uh, but anyway, going back to the Silicon Valley, I don't even know why. <laughs> Africans, we, we, we love to try to find the answer to our problem outside the continent. I, I, I don't understand what, where's that come from. You know, I spent 16, 17 years in, in the States. Trust me, you know, they have bigger problems also. They, they don't have it figured out. What we need is to look at the ecosystem and build the solution from the ground up, period. There is no other way. Silicon Valley cannot work here because the ecosystem is already built. You know, the value chain is already built. Our value chain is non-existent when it comes to funding. Where do you go to look for money? Unfortunately, as, as a company, 100% of our funds come from overseas. You know, can you imagine? We build a solution for the African market, but we have to go outside Africa to look for money to build this solution because we don't even believe on our own, you know, that we can solve our problem. One of the biggest problem, um, first of all, Africa is a continent. So Silicon Valley sits in one state. Uh, uh, so what we need is to democratize access to funding in Africa. That's what we need to do. We need to find vehicle to democratize access to funding. If we don't do that, it's going to be the same guys raising the same money and you're going to see the same guys raising 15, 20, 30 million where the other guy is barely raising 10,000, can't even compete. Perhaps while you're still there, how, how do you imagine doing that? I'm, I'll... I'm going to... Ok, that's fine. You can go first and I'll come back. Ok. Uh, J'aime beaucoup ce que, ce que tu dis sur um, le fait d'aller chercher des solutions ailleurs. Um, Africans are, are traumatized because you do not get out of three centuries of centuries and two centuries of colonialism. And we have to keep our mind on something. We are too young. African states are only 50 years. Uh, so 50 years for civilization, it represents nothing. So this traumatism dating back from five centuries, I mean, just don't look at the 50 years. I understand some things. I can see some aspect and instead of getting uh, nervous, I think now I'm getting smiling. I'm getting older, so I start smiling a lot. But uh, this is very important. The Burkina Bay teacher, uh, the lecturer Kizabo, is saying Africans should stop sleeping on, on bed made by the others. Because even the look of Africans on themselves is a look that has been forged from elsewhere. It is that like French and Germans, Americans and English are looking at us. For instance, in my country, I'm working for the public sector, and I talk about it freely. We launched a a digital park in order to develop any tech ecosystem and uh, the city is called Jamnajo so we call it Jamnajo Valley so it is just like Silicon Valley so I think this is stupid how can we call it Jamnajo Valley uh, this is going to depend the complex that we have because have the others and the solutions that we are still going to fetch from the others and this to me is a first, a first phase of getting out of the colonialism we need to think ourselves when we devise our own solutions when we have to get solutions through our world, our systems. So long as we don't stop importing things, we will still be, be where we are 50 years ago, despite the laboratory, the incubators and the startup will be there because we have not solved the main issue, which has to do with thinking ourselves the way we are, looking at our issues, our weaknesses and our strength and go and uh, reach the world kind of consensus around uh, you know coming up with bottom line african solutions so you you were you were starting on a thread around how we can democratize funding how do you imagine that this can be done you're an entrepreneur yourself um, and not because you failed in school but because you wanted to <laughs> and because you want to change people's lives and things and of course make a bit of money while you're doing that what, what are your solutions i mean what would you do if you were in the position of government or whatever other player right now today no, not in a position of government, but uh, I, I'll say uh, there, there's a lot of solutions. Uh, one of the one of the funds we we've done is crowd investing, not crowdfunding, but crowd investing. Um, I, I would go even further. You know, we're trying to bring this uh, stock exchange market in Africa. Why can we have a stock exchange for the startups? Why can we engage the public to to give money to 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 invest in those startups? Small amount, a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, but you have a bunch of people. Uh, uh, giving that money for, for either an interest uh, or equity. 
um, and you see those platforms already developing in in uh, in other I mean other continent, but in Africa we don't. We're chasing VCs and uh, and loan. I mean, you know, if I don't I don't know how many startups we have here. By the way, how many startups we have here? Oh wow. Well, anyway, don't don't get a loan as a startup. Please don't. Uh, it's it's the worst idea possible. But there's a lot of solution again. If, if, if you go on the premise that, you know, we have to look outside the continent as a solution, then we will fail from the beginning. But if we look from the ground up, look what's the problem, we need at least to create hundreds of thousands of startups across the continent to really solve the unemployment problem and the issue of poverty and all those things, including social impact. How are you going to do this? Because most of them will need some type of capital. And I think, you know, democratizing access to stock market, crowd investing, crowd equity is the way to go. Right. And uh, your thoughts on this, Hamid? I never created a startup in my life, so I trust just on Henry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Here's a nice, honest man. Uh, perhaps let me just finish with this last round of...